In this tutorial, we're going to be instancing the players that we made in the last tutorial. I'll also make sure they can move around and collide with each other. So we'll go over to the lobby and in the script, first of all, after we join the server, we want to set the join button to disable just so that we can click the join button twice. Next up, we go over to the server and on the connected to server, we just want to hide the lobby. And on connection field, we're going to just set the join button disabled to false so that we can actually press it again. Also, on the disconnected, we're just going to, instead of hide, we're going to show. The next thing is we're going to go back to the rest directory here and create a new, new script. This script is going to be called global. And the global script is going to be autoloaded. So we we'll go back to project, project settings, autoload, and we're going to add it there. When you open it, we're going to create a function called instance load. And this is basically going to be instancing nodes for us because it's kind of a long process and we're going to be instancing players, bullets, things very often. So it's, it's actually more advisable to create a function for that, which is the instance node function which takes in the node, the parent and the location. Basically, it's going to instance the node in this first line and set the location and set the global position to the location. Then it's going to add it as a child of the parent that is specified up here and it returns the node instance. Pretty easy stuff. So with that, we'll go back to the server. And in, on the player connected, we're just going to send an RPC call to everybody in the network. That's what this zero stands for. I'm going to tell it to call the instance player function with the ID and this position here. This is just a, a hard coded position, but as time goes on, I'll get to create spawn points and all that stuff. So for now, we're just going to call this function on the client side. So we'll go back there. But before we do that, we're going to create another script and I'm just going to call this nodes. Actually, this is the parent where we're going to be um, adding all our all the players and all the bullets and all that too. So also we go out to project, project settings, auto load and call it there. So over here in the server.gg, up here we're going to just preload those players and other players. So we say var player is going to be equal to preloaded version of the scene player.csn and we're going to copy and paste this just name this other players other player and also here other player so now remember we're calling this instance player so in the client we're going to use a remote function so that the server can be able to call it and it's going to have an id and a location so inside here we're going to set p to player if the get network unique id is equal to id which basically is saying if this is if it's me that is playing the game then instance the player, if not, instance the other player. So that's actually what is going to make it possible that your character is this player and your or the, the other guys in your scene are these players. So this line here, this if, is basically going to check for that. If the current ID is equal to your ID, then instance the player, if not, instance the other player, basically. So player instance is going to be equal to global.instance.node p, and this p is basically this p here. And it's going to instance it as a child of the nodes, the nodes um, script that we made here, the auto layered script. And it's going to instance it at that location. Next up, we set the player instance name to string ID, which is just going to set it to ID. Please don't miss this step because you're going to run into some problems in the future. The next thing is we're going to also check again if you are the player that just connected. Then it's going to loop through all the other peers that have connected in the past. That's um, to allow such that if you instance yourself in the scene late, you'll also be able to instance the other people um, that has already been there before. So we're going to loop through all the connected peers. Then we're going to make sure i is not equals 1. That's like, make sure we're not talking about the server because we don't want to instance the player for the server. Then we just want to call that function again, instance player, with i and with location. Basically, it's just going to go back and forth, back and forth in a kind of loop form until it completely instances all the players. So with all that said and all that done, we're going to click play just to run the file here. I'll go over to the server. Before I run it, I just want to go back to project, um, project settings and go to window. I want to reduce the size cause it's unnecessarily big. So I can actually put it hundred by hundred cause it's a server and we don't need, we don't even need the window. So we can run it, you can see how small it is there. Server created. Go over here and join game. You can see instance the player. And to instance another player, we're just gonna move this guy around here. So we're going to create another Godot instance. Run the game. 
um joined Gabe. And as you can see, we have another guy here. But as you can see, their positions are not updating in real time. We just know that, okay, there is somebody else. And that's actually what we want to do now. So to do that, first off, we go over to the player.gd. And uh, sorry, the player.tsn. And this time, we're going to connect the timeout signal to the player script. And over here, we're going to send an RPC or reliable ID, which is going to send it to one, which is the server, basically. And we're going to call the function update transform. We'll send the global position, rotation, and the velocity of our player. So we'll go to the server, and then the update transform function is going to take a position, rotation, and velocity. And after that, we're going to get the player that sends it. So to get the player, um, the player's ID that sends it, we just use get tree RPC sender ID, and we're going to get the player. And we're going to tell every other person, um, with RPC unreliable. We should update that particular player's transform and in there we're going to give it the player id that is the player that i want to move the position and the rotation and velocity of that player if you don't understand what this rpc or reliable id i recommend the first tutorial on this series because i actually covered all that there with all the rpc calls so as you all know by now if we are creating if we are sending an rpc call we have to go and create the function on the other end so we go here to the client side and on the server, scroll down. So over here, we'll create a remote function of this player transform, which is going to take the ID, position, rotation, and velocity. Then we'll basically check if we are the ones that sent this RPC call. That's basically saying if the player we're trying to move is not myself, then we'll call the node and we're going to get the string of that ID, which, um, as I said here, this line is essential. So we're going to set the name to the ID over here when we start the player so that we can actually call it here. So we call the node and we're going to call the update transform function because as you can see, the only kind of people that are going to be allowed for this are the other players, not the person that is currently playing the game on that client. So on other player.gd, update the transform and as you can see here, um, I cover all this in the last tutorial. So if you haven't watched it and you want to follow along, go ahead and watch it. All this code will be available on GitHub anyways. So we call the update transform. It, it basically moves this player on the other client. This thing is quite hard for you to grasp, but actually I re recommend that other tutorial if you want to really understand this part of it. There will be timestamps in the description of that tutorial, so you can go check it out. We are almost ready to run the game, but the last thing is on the player script here, on the player scene here, we're going to go over to the timer and we're going to click auto start so that it can start at the beginning of the game so with that being done we're going to run the server now and go ahead and run the client we're going to join game here i'm going to create another godot that will run it on this side too so on this one we're going to join the game as you can see here we are and i can move as you can see the rotation so is being updated as we are moving around so with that being said, this is all done, but as you can see, if we close one window, the players are still here. So we want to make it such that if a player disconnects, um, it's going to remove that player. So on the player disconnector, we're just going to call delete object ID. And this is just basically going to send it to all the peers in the network. So on the delete object function, we're going to check if node has um, that node that we want to delete. If it does, then we just free it. And this is going to delete the player objects basically. And it's going to delete it from every client in the network. So with that done, we can run the scene here. And also run another instance. Last thing, run the server. So I can join game here. Join game here. As you can see, I can move this guy. Move him over here. And when I close that window, yeah, he gets deleted from this scene. So because he's disconnected and we can no more interact with him. Basically, that is for this tutorial. I, think, I hope you liked it. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Smash subscribe. And bye.